that. Normally it doesn't work out that perfectly. Normally after round even says that, hey, you round to two decimal places. But um, the next thing is, is, is they ask for a plot of the data. So let me grab the plots here. Um, and then your, and then that crunch will do it for you. You can also do this in the TI 8384, uh, but it's, uh, let me see if I can. So one of the challenges, let me copy image. So here it is, here, here's, what, here's what they did. You can see it's not scaled well. That's why it's such a hard one to kind of figure out. It looks like it's option B though. Just kind of eyeballing it um, with what's most reasonable. Okay. All right. Okay. So next question here, really, really similar. Um, you have to be really careful, especially on the test. They may not tell you which one is X and which one is Y. So you may have to like discern that on your own. Okay. Um, that that's a common common thing that I've seen. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna do the regression. Simple linear, x is x, y is y, compute. And I'll snip the output into our screen here to look at together. It's really nice when the calculator does the work and all you have to do is kind of interpret the answers. So this time, you can see it's right there. That's the information you're looking for. Have you guys talked, has your teacher talked about what you you might like be expected to do on a test or quiz like will you have to do this by hand or he didn't um in the lecture he didn't like mention any like thing with a calculator so i think yes by hand uh it's pretty um, i mean you, you really want to check that because it's it's really hard to do by hand like really strongly encourage you to you know, ask that question immediately. Okay, I will. Um, so when you graph the data, it looked closest to this one again. Um, so here on the next one, actually, let me do this. Uh, view an example. So here is the here are the two formulas for it, and it's it's kind of it's kind of awful. Um, so to find the intercept is this formula yeah and to find the uh i'm sorry to find the uh so that's the slope uh find the slope is that formula to find the uh the intercept is this formula uh, which isn't as bad it's based on this one this is the big one um, were you guys making tables in class like where you had um you know the, the, like a, like a table like this and, and you went like x y x squared, y squared, x times y. Does that look at all familiar to you? All he did was just really explain it and not really go over. OK. He's so really, 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 really important to find out if you have to do this, because it's it's very, very difficult. and. Uh, prone to a lot of errors i'll talk to um i'll talk to him about it tomorrow i have class tomorrow okay all right so i'm just uh so this this is what i was referring to there's um they they often ask you for the predictor and the response the predictor is x and the response is y so you have to be able to go back to the question and let me snip this in to be able to uh, to answer it. So, so X is years, so that's age. So the predictor is age. And then the response is, is price. Okay. And that, that comes from that right there, age and then price. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. It's even more. Um, so then there's this little tiny discussion about outliers and influential observations. And what you would be looking for 
and, and we, oh, we almost have to go back to the graph, um, is, is you're looking for a point that is like very far away from the blue line. Do, does this have any points that appear to be very far away from the blue line? Very far away. I don't see any that's very far away. I, I don't I don't see any. I I feel like they're all relatively close. Yeah. Um so that's 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 that there's no outliers. So influential observations are ones that really impact the slope. Um in a lot of ways they're like they're like an outlier, but they they simply have a big impact on the direction of the line. This one does not have any. So it's kind of like kind of like I'll when when there is one, I will I will let you know so that you can see what it looks like. But uh, okay, so if you recall from part A, we came up with this this equation here. Yeah. From part A, let me grab that equation one more time because we're going to use it here. Finally, this is something you always always do on your test. Here is you you get a regression equation, and then they they ask you to use it. So here, in this first opportunity for you to kind of get involved here, they're giving you the age. They're giving you x. They're saying put three in for x, and tell me what you you know what is your output. So could you could you put three in for x? Okay. Let's see what your uh, result is. Okay. Um... I got 337.63. That looks right. Uh, oh, it's around there's 100 meters. That's weird. Um, Okay, so all right, sorry, there's just a small issue with entering the answer, so just trying to get it get it right there. There's a rounding thing that it's looking for. All right. Okay. Um let's see what else we got here. So question nine. All right, so here is so new problem here. The first thing you're gonna you're asked to do is to graph the data, and that's where the technology really helps so that you can you kind of identify which one it looks like. Uh, so I'm gonna do that again in StatCrunch. Just a moment here, simple linear, x is x, y is y, compute. All right, so um, here is what the output looked like. And we're trying to match it up here. So uh, like, look yeah. like this letter B again. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes a little hard to tell. You can zoom in on the graphs. That one looks right. And then, um, you know, do you feel like there's a linear pattern to the data? Uh, I guess. I'm not sure. Yeah, actually, there is. Okay. 
So now, now it wants the regression equation. Uh, again, you'll do this in software. So let me grab that up here. So you you might get a problem on the test where the data is is not linear, like it looks like this, and then you would you would not use regression analysis on it. Okay. So here are the outputs from StatCrunch for the regression. Oh, I think your teacher might give you the output from the regression. That's a common way to do this. The, and then you have to like figure out, you know, what goes in there uh, for you. So this is 19.71 plus 0.92x. Just rounding it to two decimal places. So any questions or thoughts on that? No. No, I get it. Great. Uh, carrying on here. All right. So um, the, the the next question is asking about outliers and influential points. I still don't feel like we see one, but let's we'll take a look together here. So there's the question. You know, there's the graph. Um, yeah. Um, No one, no one. I'm going to say there's none, but I really don't know. No. Yeah, that, there are none. So if, if there was a point like way up here that caused the, the line to then shift more in that direction, that would be influential. You're, you're still kind of looking to see like how many are above and how many are below. And it's getting there. It's getting there where like there's a lot of points on one side versus another. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're on to some new types of problems here. Uh, so no, no more just regression. You're going to be calculating some stuff now. So here's the given problem. They give you um, what's called SST and SSR, and you have to calculate R squared. Okay. So to do this, you need a formula. You need yet again, you know, more formulas in your book here, your textbook. So the coefficient of determination R squared is SSR over SST, 195.0799. Divided by 206.8421. So if you got a calculator handy. Got it. one. And uh, we'll calculate this together. That's what I got too. All right. So part B here, it's asking for what's called SSE. So the formula is, is that SSR plus SSE equals SST. And if you look back at the, the original, you were given you were given uh, two of the three values. Got extra S in there. Uh, that becomes 206.8421. So you're going to subtract this to the other side. That'll give you your, your final answer. Okay. So I get 11.7622.
Any uh, questions before we move on? Um, so I'm a bit confused on what exactly we're trying to calculate SSR, SSE, what does that stand for? So they're, they're, the SSR is, is called the sum of squares of the regression. And then sum of squares, E is error equals sum of squares total. And um, the coefficient of determination tells you like how good a fit is your line. Okay. To the data. Um, like this one would have a fairly moderate number, like maybe 80 90 percent um so it's telling you like how good is the fit and so the sum of squares is calculated based on base how close are the the values to the line okay it's actually a distance measurement um and and we're going to get to that like there's some problems coming up where they ask you to like look at um look at uh, our values and be like, is it strong? Is it weak? Okay. That answer your question? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's look at, and maybe get some more, more of an answer later uh, when we go through this. The next question here, First thing they're asking you is like, is there a linear pattern? So in, in, in real life, the first thing you're always supposed to do is graph your data. Like you want to get a picture of what your data looks like. That way you can make some determination of it. So I'm going to graph this. We have X is X, Y is Y is Y. And uh, ooh, we got to change our axis options, edit. Well, um, sorry, I'm trying to edit this and it's, it's, um, I'm not seeing how to change the, uh, change this. All right, there we go. Zero. Okay. We axis okay All right. so the uh the picture here when you graph it is the data is all kind of up here there's not like you could maybe say that's the right data but well why wouldn't why wouldn't that be the right one or you know or even just that like we we don't really know so to me there's no linear pattern here like there's no linear pattern it's inappropriate to carry out any kind of analysis so hopefully that's what it wants and then you don't do the regression and you might see a test question like that yeah so the the idea here is that you, there's no linear regressions there's nothing to do i'm just clicking through some of these And then we'll, we'll move on to another new questions. That's why you always plot the data first. So you can just kind of get a picture of what's going on. All right. So we get another problem like this where we first want to graph it and see if there is a pattern or not. So I'm going to open it up the data again in StatCrunch. All right, clicking the buttons, compute. All right, so this one, let me edit the axes again. All 
All right, so here is here is the so this one's a little bit better than the last one. There there does appear to be sort of a trend, a linear trend there. Would you would you agree with that? I would agree. Yeah. So that so we can say okay, there is a linear pattern to the data, and um, and then you actually would do your your regression analysis on it. So the next question here is asking for uh, some of the values from the output of the regression. So um, I'm going to pull up the output and then we'll we'll see where to find it. So just a moment here. So here we go. Um, the uh, uh, the R square is right here. That's that's R squared. That's what it's looking for in this, and it's just around to four decimal places. So you really do want to know where to look. Um, be able to answer these on your uh, on your test. Okay. All right, so the next question is, it's, it's very much related to what we just did. It says determine the percentage of variation, and that's what you're looking for here. You take that R squared value and you multiply it by 100, and that's what gives you the, the percent there. So you mm -hmm. have that 0. 0.8299 times 100 ends up being 82.99%. And so then you can say like something about how useful the equation is. And and because your R value is pretty high, it's uh it's we'll say it's very useful. Um these are these ranges depend on the instructor. Okay. All right. All right, so the next couple of problems are all sort of, they're not numerical. All right, so I skipped a few. We can go back and clean up if we need to. Um, All right, so it says the coefficient of determination of a set of data points is 0 0.634. So they're telling you that R squared is 0 0.634. And they're telling you the slope is 3.73, but they're really trying to tell you is that the slope is positive. Because to calculate R, you take the square root of both sides, and it ends up being plus or minus 0 0.634. And you have to decide whether it's positive or negative. It depends on the slope. It's positive if the slope is positive. It's negative if the slope is negative. So in your problem, since the slope is positive, you're going to take the positive of this of this number. All right. So it ends up rounding three decimals to zero point seven nine six. Uh, what's the last question on this? Okay. All right, next question here, I'm gonna just quickly uh, make a scatter plot of the data. All right. Okay, so take a look at this scatter plot here. Do you believe that there is a linear relationship between these two variables based on what you see? Is there is there a line that would connect the data? Yes. Yes. 
So that's that's the first question they're asking here. They're asking you the linear coefficient of data. You know, is it appropriate? Yes, it is. It is appropriate because the data appear to be scattered about a line. All right. So then they ask you to find the correlation coefficient. That's the value of R. Correlation coefficient is, car, is R. A coefficient of determination is R squared. Often they ask you a question where you, they, they it's multiple choice. They'll say, which one is the linear correlation variable letter? R, which one's the coefficient of determination? That's R squared. So you want to know the difference uh, between those. All right, so now we're going to do the regression, which I know you can't see in the screen. Simple linear regression here. X is X, Y is Y, compute. All right, so here's the output from the regression. All right, so the uh, so today what we've done is is there's been like three places you you've been looking at. One is the actual equation, one mm -hmm. is the r square. Now we want the value of r. That's the that's the third thing you'll typically need. So 0.972 it looks like. That's what it's looking for there. Right. And so that is considered strong correlation. Another question they often ask is like, they'll give you five numbers and say, which is the strongest of the correlation? Um, and, and we'll do maybe do some next time on that. But that's that's an example of something. So this this is strong uh, positive linear correlation. It's it's strong because the number is is really close to one positive because it's obviously positive. Okay, so the only questions that we have not done are not really numerical. Um, they're sort of fill in the blank type questions. What do you want us to do here? Do you want us to do any of them? Do you want to do them? What would be? I think I'll do them on my own. Okay. All right. Was well, there anything else you want us to look at today? That's all. Excellent. All right. Well, we'll just close out here and I appreciate getting a little, little time to myself here to have some lunch. So very